So believe it or not, we're actually coming up on the one year anniversary of Unity ECS 1.0 being available to us. And more recently, we've seen a couple new updates to Unity ECS that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Also wanted to bring up some other fun and random miscellaneous events and things in this little update wrap up video. First thing being this Thursday, August 24th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Unity is hosting one of their Dev Blitz Days where basically you can ask them questions about a particular topic. Now this one is very relevant to this channel because it is going to be about Unity's data orange technology stack. So if you have any questions about Unity Dots ECS, whether it's related to just the regular entities package or anything related to uh, physics or Havoc physics or anything like that, you can ask that in the Unity forums as well as on the official Unity Discord. So again, that's taking place this Thursday, August 10th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you have your questions queued up so you're ready to go when that time hits. Next up, some very, very exciting news. As many of you already know, Unity's hosting their annual Unite event in Amsterdam this year on November 15th and 16th. And I am very excited to announce that I'm going to be in attendance at Unite this year in Amsterdam in person. Um, so very excited to be there and see many of you all there. I'm sure as we get closer to the actual date, we can figure out some type of community meetup for those of you who are going to be in attendance as well. I think that would be very exciting. Definitely let me know if you are planning on going to Unite down in the comment section below. Um, and by the way, I do just want to mention that if you are planning on going, I would highly recommend picking up your ticket as soon as possible because the prices increase at the end of the month. Also, it's good to get your you know travel situation and everything sorted out earlier rather than later. And so I'll have some links down in the description where you can register for the event for yourself. Next up, some more fun news. I recently got a Steam Deck. I recently got a Steam Deck. I know a little late to the party on this one, but I um, saw somebody in my Discord saying that they basically have been using the Steam Deck to test as sort of like a minimum spec version of their game. Because of course, when we're developing the, our games on these high-end PCs, that's not always gonna be the situation that somebody is actually going to be playing your game on as the end consumer. So they basically said how they've just been using the Steam Deck to test out their games on a kind of minimum spec device. So I thought that was a really great idea and I kinda wanna do some testing more of myself. Um, wanna make some, you know, like little builds and see kind of what the performance differential between, you know, my high-end computer is and this just kind of regular standard Steam Deck is um, and just kind of, yeah, do some performance comparisons on them. So I think it would be really fun. So let me know if there's anything that you wanna see me do with the Steam Deck. As you can see, I've already gone ahead and ported my Ludum Dare 53 Game Jam game, Pizza Survivors, over to the Steam Deck. So if you do have a Steam Deck, feel free to download this game for yourself and play around with it. Um, it's actually been performing very, very smooth the entire way through, even at the end where we spawn a couple hundred enemies on the screen. It's basically been at a locked 60 frames per second, so you cannot ask for much more than that. And then finally, before we get into some of the items related to the Unity ECS updates, I just wanna give a major shout out to you all because you guys all showed up for the Unity Summer Sale. I know in my past couple of videos, I've been mentioning some things about the Unity Summer Sale and some of the assets that are available to it. Um, this year's summer sale was really cool because basically Unity asked a bunch of members of the community and creators like myself to basically pick out a bunch of different assets that they would feature on sale. Now the idea of this is the assets that I picked out were on sale for one dedicated week and then after that which is actually going on right now is kind of the best of portion of the sale. Basically some of the most popular assets from the sale continue to be on sale during the best of portion of the sale. Now, really exciting news because actually every single one of the assets that I picked are all part of the best of sale. So very, very excited that major shout out to you all because I know a bunch of these assets are like really niche dots assets and everything like that. So really hope that you're all enjoying your new dots assets. And if there's anything that you still wanna pick up on discount, I will definitely leave some links to all those assets down in the description below because you can still get all the awesome animation packages and local avoidance and everything like that still for 50% off. And so that sale runs all the way until the end of the month. It ends at August 31st at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So make sure you go definitely pick some up if there's anything that you've been kind of having your eye on. Okay, so now to talk about some of the more recent updates to Unity ECS. There's actually been three updates since I last talked about ECS updates on this channel. Um, and that's just because they haven't really been that major groundbreaking of updates, not a whole, you know, a lot of new and exciting features going on, but there are definitely some cool things here and there that I'm gonna be talking about today. 
but again, mostly it's kind of, you know, performance and stability oriented, avoiding crashes and giving us better error messages and things like that. So it didn't really make sense to do, you know, videos on each one of these uh, kind of individual updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and group these all together. Um, the updates that we have are 1.0.10.11 and 14. So I guess we'll just go ahead and tackle these in order of release. So starting with the .10 version, not a whole lot of new features or anything in this one. We basically have just a really minor improvement that we can now add managed components to our system associated entities. There also were a bunch of backend improvements to entity manager operations where we're targeting entity queries. So if we have say some entity query and we want to say add a component to all entities that match that entity query, we can now do that much more efficiently through these new operations. Then continuing on to the .11 version, we're now gonna go over to some entity command buffer operations that target entity queries. So one really interesting change that they recently added is we now basically have an enum flag for each of these entity, man entity command buffer operations that target these entity queries. And we basically tell it when to execute the entity query. You know, when, when should, the computer basically evaluate which entities are associated with a particular query. Now the existing behavior was for that query to actually be evaluated when we record that operation. However, we now have the ability to actually evaluate that entity query when we're playing back that command. So it's just kind of a little bit of a minor difference about when we're evaluating these entity queries to actually perform the entity command buffer operations on the entity queries. And the other interesting addition coming in the .11 version is we can now have generic I systems where we can basically have an I system with a generic type attribute on there. This was actually previously supported in system bases, although it isn't necessarily a you know widely used feature as far as I'm concerned. However, it is now possible to do that in the I system systems. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and splice a clip at the end of this video where my friend Danny, who works at Unity, um, is going to kind of explain a little bit about some of the use cases for these generic I systems, which was brought up on the live stream that I did with him a couple weeks ago. And then finally, we come to the most recent version, the .14 version of Entities 1.0. One of the notable changes that I saw here is there's now an entity command buffer operation to do a move component, where we basically move a component from one to one entity to another entity. The whole idea is this basically kind of streamlines the process of saying, taking a component off an entity, creating a new basically copy of that, taking that component, adding it to that entity, and then removing that component from the source entity. So we're basically just, you know, taking it from one, moving it to the other, and it gets removed off the initial one. Now it is a little bit interesting because I tried to experiment with this one myself a little bit, and it doesn't look like it's actually part of the API just yet, so I'm not sure if there is some issue with the change log or something like that. But basically we do actually already have this option for us on the entity manager. Now one thing to note is that this option can only be used with managed data components. Again, those are the classes that implement iComponent data where we can basically use any managed non-burstable type. And the whole purpose for this is because yeah, it basically streamlines that you know, three-step process of you know taking a component, copying it, adding it to another one, and removing it from the original one. But also for any managed objects that implement the iDisposable interface, when we basically remove the component off of the source entity, in the past, the dispose method was basically called when we ran that remove component operation. So, you know, if we were to kind of do this move on our own, we actually might end up with a null data value on our managed component on the new entity, which is definitely not what went to happen. And then finally, there was just one other notable performance improvement that I saw that I thought was quite interesting is now that the entity command buffer systems actually avoid sync points if you don't have any operations recorded to the entity command buffers. So definitely a good idea to avoid unnecessary sync points. Anyways, that's just about going to do it for today's video. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with that clip that I mentioned earlier. So yeah, what would be a good example use case for a generic I system? Um, system API actually supports um, type level uh, generics. Very hidden feature of system API is the fact that it uh, supports uh, generics as long as the generics is defined on the type that is using the system API. So for instance, if you have a, uh, if you're using system API in a system, that system generics is actually allowed um, to be used as part of your uh, system API. So you can do system API dot get component T. Um, and then if that T is coming from 
a you know the the system itself. Oh, okay. That, that is fine. Like every other case, it will give a compiler. Like system API will complain at you. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. The uh, generic, but but okay, not interesting. For the systems themselves, and and so this has been before only worked for uh, system base. Um, yeah. Like a my attack system, fire attack, and water attack, and so on. Okay.